Making a life worth living and retirement worth having is openly about how we produce a life. It's really more and less the way that we interact with people, whether they are our birth family of siblings and a mother or father, or whether they are professionals in our literal social networks, whether they be online or offline, or whether they be our actual neighbors who we sometimes reach out to in a way that says, hey, I'm really sorry to intrude on your little holiday time with yourself or with your goal of getting into some sort of libation, but openly, I really need some help. Some things have gone awry in my family, and I wonder whether or not you could help me with something. Tonight, I had to literally go to a complete and total stranger's home that I thought had a person there named Angel, which seemed to be a lie I was told by a family member. But the people were kind, and they opened their heart and their door and allowed me to walk in to borrow a telephone. In the first little call, I reached my mother, but she hung up on me. So here I stood, embarrassed, in front of a total stranger, trying to call my mother about something that had just happened to me. In reality, she was unwilling to take the call. We know because the stranger suggested that I call again. She was flabbergasted that a mother would hang up on a son. She literally just said, let's try and call again. So we did, and I ended up having to leave a voicemail to a mom who was clearly sitting there listening, doing whatever she literally thought was right. Now, in her mind, she's done a lot of things right. She feels like she's given things. She's literally done probably what more than her fair share. And I really want to know who says what a fair share really is in life. There are moms out there who think they're giving their fair shake to their children, but maybe they're not giving enough fair shake professing the Lord's name in that process. You see, when a mom uses her intellect to make a decision, it may not be what the Lord would have her do. When a mom says, I'm going to pray about this a little while, and I'm going to listen with all my heart to what would Jesus want me to do in this moment of time to honor my faith, to honor the Lord, to honor the predicaments that come about in life through the hardships of men and women and sometimes the hands of ill-willed people. But openly, I have to ask myself, what would Jesus do in this little moment of time? Now, in life, we have other methods to hear the Lord. We have metaphysics, we have physical repar reparations, and we also have lots of signs in the world. In my life, I started receiving signage because I literally went to a class with a metaphysical Christian teacher who taught me how to see the signs of God. You see, we are so old in our ways now that we literally think if we just go to church on Sunday, if we read our Bible, if we stay in the Word, that literally everything will manifest itself. There is some truth in that, but there's also a little bit of a lie in that that pastors don't mean to tell, but they sometimes do tell. They mean to say that we can get information about how to handle situations literally in the Bible, but practically they're not telling us how they would handle something if they were faced with something else going on for someone who is looking for help. Now, why do I say that? I say that because the number of churches I've literally gone through through my last uh, bout of homelessness and how many literally said, I'm sorry, we don't have $10 to give to someone for a book that may or may not be read by our pastor, that may or may not be in alignment with our philosophy, and that may or may not put food on this man, homeless man's table. Now, when we put it in that perspective, we have to look at how much do we spend on Starbucks a week? Do we go twice a week? Then we just spent $10. Sure, coffee time in people's lives is important. It can be a great networking opportunity to not only meet someone there for coffee, to have a conversation about God and moving them forward in their abilities to help the church, but at literally at the same time, it can be something different. It can be something that says, I'd like to meet a new person. I'd like to socialize with people in this place, and I'd like to produce new relationships. You see, in my life, I've produced a lot of relationships is somewhat true. But whether or not those people liked or valued 
what I could do for them well enough for them to keep a relationship is on them entirely. Sure, a little bit's on me, but it's mainly about how that person treats us, isn't it? I mean, in life, we have a moment of time to prepare for all the positive aspects of a relationship. But as time progresses, as life lessons occur for that individual, at the Lord's hands, we realize that we have to sometimes step away to allow the Lord to do his bidding, his own lessons, and his calling on us may not come out until a little later in life. You see, in my personal life, I have met a lovely gal who was openly in a relationship at the time that I met her. I actually heard the Lord say, she is going to get a divorce so loudly in my soul I almost shook, but openly that is precisely what happened. A little bit later I heard other things and I said, okay Lord, I'll try, but in truth I had to listen carefully. Because when I disobeyed, when I didn't listen, when I was off in the Lord's timing, I presented a different difficulty for that relationship. I went too early, according to God, to deliver some presents I had kept in my home for almost three years, hoping and praying every single day that that loving person who was sort of a part of my life, sort of part of my friendship groups, sort of a part of my business planning and strategy abilities going forward, would let me back in her life. When we talk about these honest things, we have to think about who is voyeuring on our life through social media. Are they listening to get to know us better? Are they listening to produce something ill-willed against our rights to talk about the storyline of our life? You see, there are many storylines in our lives. We have practically many loves. It's not always true, but we might have that many loves if we're busily trying to gather a lot of loves to avoid the one that the Lord has chosen for us. We also have opportunities to value our children. And that's something I observed the other day at a McDonald's. I was ready to come out of my chair, take a telephone from a father who was in his mid to late 30s and say, pay attention to your two and three year olds, stop shouting at them about their one desire to talk and literally train them in what is and isn't appropriate for the lessons of life of being in public at a dining table where other people are around. That man simply sat there and told his kids to shut up, to move over, to sit up straight. I mean, it was a litany of emotional abuse. Thankfully, there was three of them that they could all just kind of play along and continue their little games in a quieter way so that he got his little phone time out while likely his wife or the mother of one of the children who wasn't present might not have said the same sort of thing. Now, when I literally talk about parenting, I have some experience in that. I have parent many, parented many children, is not true. I have certainly parented a wayward child from another man's loins, and I know what that's like. Step parenting is one of the hardest things in the world to do because your mom or your dad is in love with somebody else now. You're not able to see your biological father or mother. It's a loss of a relationship. It could be a safety feature to your life, but you may not know that in a young age when it all goes down, and frankly, it can be scary if the person is not really a safe individual to be around. In my situation, my son didn't realize what a royal pain in the butt his birth father was, but he got that message after a short time of being back home, after a very long time of being in America. Now that's my story. I have the right to tell that story, but openly I've also been told by other parents that their children learn more from me in the times they studied the language of Japan with me than they did in any other part of their educational setting. Each one, each one who literally timed out and moved on to college went on to some glorious opportunities. They also took greater risk, they took more opportunities because I often talk to them about the importance of networking, the importance of choosing a path that they're passionate about and openly making sure that they were not so esoteric in their belief systems that they couldn't allow for another human being to have a different perspective, a different spiritual life, a different faith, a different whatever than they do in life. You see, it's the mix of these people, it's the blend of teams that makes it all the world, all the while important. And I believe these young people, men and women, 
literally got that message. Now, openly, there are moments of time we can make a difference for someone else. We can see that our relationship with them has gone foul, and all we have to do in our souls is to say, I forgive him, Lord. I forgive that individual, and I'm going to make it right. I'm going to help. I'm not going to worry about the tit-for-tat game that sometimes is played with people's emotions, and I'm simply going to man up or woman up and go help that individual because it's the right thing to do. I know about their struggle. I know about their struggle and I'm going to make a difference, but I'm going to practically make sure I don't do one thing to harm the life of that individual who's going through a tough time. That lies in the difference between certain types of atheists and certain types of people. You see, there are certain people who would like to see something harmful happen to me or the other parts of my work. I literally know this because of so much has been stolen from me. But at the same time, I have people that I really long to get to know, that I took time to decide whether or not I wanted to meet them, and I literally got insight into how we might work together going forward. Now, if I openly say this to anybody in mental health, they're like, okay, this guy's going off rails again, blah, blah, blah. That's not true. I have matured in my spirituality. I've seen more in life. And openly, I might have seen far more in life than the individual who's taking the call or who needs to report the customer service violation or whatever it is to prevent a lawsuit happening to that person, that company, that organization, because someone didn't think before they responded. Now, this has been Blake Ensign of Blaze Communications LLC saying simply thanks for listening.